It's uh, U.S. and Iran. Iranian President Rouhani says this, his country will enrich uranium to any amount we want. Iran has declared that it'll enrich as much uranium as it wants, regardless of its obligations under an international agreement. The New York Post reports the Iranian president, Hassan Rouhani, has rejected pleas from Europe to uphold the 2015 nuclear deal, which lifted sanctions in return for Iran agreeing to limit on its nuclear ambitions. Speaking at the cabinet meeting, Mr. Rouhani said Iran would increase its enrichment levels above the agreed 3.67% cap unless those remaining in the pact follow through with their obligations. It would require 90% enrichment for the nuclear weapons. Our advice to Europe and the United States is to go back to logic and to the negotiating table, go back to understanding, to respecting the law and resolutions of the UN Security Council. Under those conditions, all of us can abide by the nuclear deal. Wait, who, who's asking for who to go back to the negotiating table? President Rouhani. Negotiating table. Okay. Are you sure he and Rohani said to go back to the negotiating table? That is what our <sighs> That's weird. lip says. Let me go here and just uh, double Because check. negotiation is very unpopular right now in Iran after what Trump did. Um, yeah. Let, let Double check that. But also let me know what you think because I have a lot of comments on this. I don't know how far, how detailed you guys want me to take it. Yeah, um, so I'm looking at it. This is the full. This is the full uh, portion of it. And any amount we want, any amount that is required, we will take over 3.7 percent. Mr. Rouhani said, and then they go on to continue quoting him. And he says, "Our advice to Europe and the United States is to go back to logic in the negotiating table, go back to understanding, to respecting the law and resolutions of the UN Security Council. Mm -hmm. Under those conditions, all of us can abide by the nuclear deal." So, in this in this um, news article, they're quoting him as saying that. Okay, but okay. So here, here's the thing. Um, it's very hard to make the Islamic Republic of Iran look like under the right side because the Islamic Republic of Iran is a criminal regime. Okay, it's a criminal, brutal, anti-human rights, anti, um, you know, anti-sanity regime. Uh, that is it's a terrorist state okay so it's very very hard for anybody to make them look like they're on the right side um and trump has managed to do that thank you very much trump has managed to give so many good narratives to the islamic republic of iran to make them look so, look themselves look globally like they were wrong they were right and the united states was wrong like how badly do you have to fuck up everything to make this such a fucked up regime look like the good guys here okay which are they not okay but the narrative is now the narrative that the trump administration has just gifted to the Islamic Republic, which is they're just getting the best of all. Like the Un Iranian government probably cannot believe how uh, how easy it is for them. Everyone thinks the sanctions are going to crush them. The sanctions are helping them. Okay, the sanctions are helping the hardliners in the government, but they are basically getting all the benefits of. Um, so you have to understand, you can't treat the Islamic Republic of Iran as if it's just one thing, right? You have to look at the hardliners, the reformists, and the opposition, right? Um, the hardliners are just loving everything Trump is doing right now, okay? Um, they didn't like the uh, nuclear deal, right? Uh, right. And they look, they seem so victorious right now, right? They're getting... Um, they looking they looking at the country and they're telling the rest of the country we told you so right, and they're making the, looking to the rest of the world and look, saying first of all, Trump what Trump wants to do Trump wants to put pressure so Obama did a deal with Iran, and Trump and said no fuck that let's leave it right even though they had a signed agreement, and even though Iran is you know, Iran did abide by the agreement right so they say like yeah you abide by the agreement but you have missiles right you have missiles and we don't like that and iran is like yeah but that wasn't in the deal you it, there wasn't in the deal that i cannot have missiles so you are backing out of the deal basically 
you're we signed a deal we have an agreement and you're just you know not abiding by it you are not abiding by the deal and now you're asking us to come up with a new deal why should we sign a deal with you when you, it was so easy for you to just like what's the point of signing deals with you if it was so right. easy for you to just abandon the first deal we had like you're saying like well we don't like you you si you signed you, you have missiles and we that's why we're going to leave the deal uh, even though it wasn't part of the agreement and now you're asking us to come sign why would we ever sign anything with you if it's so easy for you to just so is they just it's, they can just tell the world they're like look this is this is why we're going to enrich uranium because we tried to not enrich uranium and tell you like okay fine we won't enrich uranium let's come up with a deal and let's 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 figure this out together Again, I'm just saying how, how it looks right now, okay? I'm not trying... I don't want to defend the Islamic Republic of Iran, but I'm just saying, look what you... what you've did, Look what the narrative that you give into them. You're like, look, we could have enriched uranium. They told us not to. And they say, like, okay, fine, let's come, let, come up with an agreement. We signed an agreement. And they just... They left the agreement. And now they're coming up and telling us to sign a new deal. And we're saying, well, fuck that. We're going to enrich uranium, Right? Because we already signed an agreement with you, and you guys just abandoned it, just like that, for something that was for something that is not even in the agreement. So, I mean, what's the counter to that? And Trump is like, okay, let's put sanctions on them to put them on so much under pressure, so that they're forced to come back to the negotiating table. You know how bad it looks for them to Iran to go back to the negotiating table right now with the United States. I mean, the, the, because the, the people are like, like, what are you doing? They, you know, you're so weak now. What, what, why would you, you, they look so weak if they go back to, they seem like they could just do whatever the like government there wants to look powerful. They want to look like strong and they, United States comes out of the deal and they put pressure on you. And now you go back, make another deal. Obviously they're not going to do that. They put sanctions on Iran to make the Iranian people hate the government so that the government gets pressured, but the government could just re change that narrative and be like, look what they're doing. So now all the pressure that the Iranian people are feeling, the government could go to the people itself and like, look, this is what the US is doing. They want you to, they want you to hate us, but they are the ones that are backed up the deal. And everything, every, all the economical pressure that you're feeling is not because of us. They backed out of the deal. And now they're putting pressure, they're trying to turn you against us, so we sign another deal. Do you want us to sign another deal with people that back out of a deal like this? So, I know the Iranian government is hated by a lot of its own people, but a lot of people, a lot, so, I mean, it, when I say a lot, I'm not talking about majority. But, there's, but you are helping them win more people on their side. With this pressure, with this, with, you know, I mean, what are you even thinking? I mean, I know that what you're, they're thinking because it's not like they're trying to fix anything. They just want to be reelected, right? So Trump doesn't, I don't think Trump wants to go to war with Iran, not at least not before the elections, because that would be a, a suicide for, you know, political suicide for Trump. Maybe in the second term, I don't know, but not right now, but it, it does but you know they have their experts they know this is not going to work they tried sanctions before iran have survived way uh, the iranian government not iran the islamic republic has survived a lot harsher situations than this they know that this is probably not going to bring them to the negotiation table i don't know what the hell trump thinks but the experts at the white house they probably know but they the what they i think what they're thinking is when they go to the 2020 20 elections they can't just be like, um, yeah, we didn't do anything, right? So they just want to act like they're putting a lot of pressure on Iran and Iran is feeling the, you know, pressure just to be able to just have something to say to the voters, right? Um, but, but I don't, I know, I, I, I think they, I hope they know this is not going to work because if they don't know this, I don't know what they're paying them for. So if I'm saying, Armin, go passionate. No. All right. Chris is saying, speaking of Trump, he can't claim the moral high ground when he knowingly sold, um, weapons of mass destruction to Assad in Saudi Arabia. 
Yeah, I mean, of course, like yeah, and I just, when when you when your buddies buddies with Saudi Arabia, it's really hard for you to claim that you're putting pressure on Iran because of humanitarian reasons, right? Uh, it just completely destroys that narrative. But yeah, right now it's it's the Iranian people that are experiencing the pressure because of the sanctions, not really the government. The government, right? And again, the government has different parts, right? You have. The IRGC, for example, which is the main uh, military power in, in Iran, uh, has a lot of monopoly in many areas of Iran's economy, and the sanctions help them gain more control over the economy. So the the worst part of Iran's government become more powerful because of the sanctions, unless unless you put an absolute sanction and such a harsh sanction where they can't sell a single drop of oil. That's the only way you could hurt them. But if you can't do that right now. Because you also have pissed off China and Russia, so no matter how much sanctions you put on them, China is still going to buy their oil. Russia is going to still buy their oil. So harsh sanctions helps them. Absolute, completely devastating sanctions where they can't sell any oil. Well, that, it's the only thing that could hurt them, which you're not going to be able to achieve because China and Russia are not going to get on the same side with you. Um, and you, you know, so let me see another. Another godless atheist is saying, from from what I've seen in an American politics, war no, normally helps re-elect U.S. president. You have to okay, so not you have to look at the conditions. Like when Bush went to war, he had nine eleven, right? When when you did per, uh, per when you went to dropped atomic bombs on Japan, you had Pearl Harbor. You can't just go. It doesn't work like you have to have something. That's why some people think maybe uh, people like John Bolton have put American troops right next to U.S. interests just as as um, sacrificial lamb for Iranian, uh, Iranian proxies. See, Iran is also clever. Iran knows that some of these U.S. interests around that area is bait for Iran to attack uh, so that Iran could counter, so that United States can counterattack. So Iran has really experimented with how much attack they can get away with before United States uh, because Iran has used its proxies a lot in Iraq and Syria to attack US interests but it has not directly by its own army attack US interests and over the past couple of years US soldiers have died because of Iran proxies and your United States doesn't make a big deal of, of that because they don't want to go to war so Iran knows if they use proxies to kill U.S. soldiers, that's, you know, they have experimented with how, what can they get away with, right? So even right now, some tensions that you're seeing in the, um, in, you know, uh, with the ships and stuff, you can see that it's not Iran directly, it's mostly Iranian proxies. It's not enough for United States to be able to go in unless they really decide to like if if you see United States all of a sudden making a big deal out of the one of these proxy attacks, you know that United States now what really wants to go to war because Iran has attacked U.S. interests for the past five years or seven years uh, and killed American soldiers and they don't they didn't even make the news so. If Iran continues to use proxies and all of a sudden the United States say like, oh, now we have to go to war, you know that, okay, United States, why didn't they say things about those couple of years before and now they're saying it, so maybe they really do want to go to war, right? But right. Iran wouldn't use its own soldiers because they know that if they do right now, then United States will have absolutely, you know, really good excuse to go to war. So they know they don't want to do that. But... Another thing is that this this pre a lot of people are like oh no uh, war helps re-election again Trump is different Trump is not Trump's base doesn't like a uh, war unlike other Republicans before him right like so um, you can see when Trump when Trump attacked Assad bases um, they, wait, so they, they, by the way, I don't know what Chris said. Uh, Trump didn't sell weapons to Assad. It was just Saudi Arabia, not Assad. So just correction to what uh, Chris said above. But when Trump attacked Assad bases, um, it was his, um, his own base really went against Trump. They are, this is a Republican president with a following that wants, 
um, no money to be spent outside of the United States. They just want the, the president to just focus on the United States. So I don't think he's going to see the same result if Trump goes to war. And Trump knows this, okay? This is why there's an internal war happening in the White House. There are some people in there, like Bolton, for example, in the White House. They really, really want the United States to go to war. And Trump knows that his base doesn't like that. So there's now an internal struggle happening right now in the White House between these two different groups, right? So Trump doesn't want to go to war, but he's trying to resist these other forces in the White House. And his base, Trump's base, knows that there are some people influencing him, trying to get him to go to war. And they're really trying to reach him and trying to get Trump to ignore these people. Um, did you want to add anything to that? Let me just see what the top comment. I just, I'm not sure if I agree that Trump doesn't want to go to war. Oh, no, he doesn't. I know he doesn't. Why? Well, I mean, his whole his whole brand was, you know, like, his entire brand was like, I mean, he to be fair, he gets influenced easily, right? He's like a sponge. He spent five minutes. He spends in in a room with people that say something else. All of a sudden, he comes out and he says completely something opposite that what he was saying yesterday, right? So, right. so it's not like he has any consistent chain of thought, but his but up until uh, recently, his entire branding was like. Uh, bring the troops home, bring the troops home, blah, blah, blah. Like, that was his entire anti-Hillary message. Um, right, because he was anti-Hillary. But yeah. <laughs> yes, if we go to war, he will win the 2020 election. No, I don't agree with that. I think he will, if he goes to war... Statistically speaking, anytime we're in a war, the president who starts it gets reelected. Yeah, well... Again, you have to look at the condition, the situations, right? Like if Bush went to, okay, think about when Bush got reelected, right? But imagine mm -hmm. if he did the Iraq war without 9-11, okay? If he just be like, let's attack Iraq, let's attack Saddam because he's a shitty guy. He but Iran is, Iran is making it easy to prove a point that maybe we have to go to, see, we can, we can, in no, America. The, Iran is, no, Iran, because they're, they're everybody, the whole world is saying like, yeah, Iran was abiding by the agreements and United States has pulled out of it. The entire U.S. Look, is saying that as well. I right? know, I know. But what they're saying now is they're saying they're going to continue getting uranium. Our our media is going to tell us this means they are making nuclear weapons. They're America not, but, is going to say, oh my media, goodness, please let's not. stop them. Okay. And Trump is going to say, yes, people, we will stop them. We're Look going at them. the media after 9-11. It was so pro the president. Okay? Oh, and yeah. And they're like, good war, good war. Look at the media right now. They're like, Iran was, uh, Iran, this pre they're anti the president going to war. They're saying that Iran was abiding by the rules. They're saying like, oh, this president wants to take us to war. We have to be careful not to let him. Um, they, and the world is like, again, if you're comparing it to Bush, for example, getting reelected after 9-11, when the whole world was like, let's get revenge, right? Yes, but when it wasn't whole... after... It wasn't after the war. It was after 9-11, but yeah. not after the war. We're and no, and and no, and I this know. Is, this but is I'm just saying you had you had a, you need a Pearl Harbor or a 9-11 for the for your country to be like yes, go to war. Let's show these motherfuckers. Let's let's get revenge, right? Trump doesn't have that right now. If United United States was very very anti getting involved in World War II. Right until Pearl Harbor. After that, that's what they needed. Pearl Harbor was what they needed to convince the American citizens that we need to go to war. And after that, the Americans were like, okay, fine, let's go to war. 9 11 had to happen for American citizens to be like, okay, fine, let's go to war. Right now, Trump doesn't have a 9 11 or a Pearl Harbor. He needs a 9 11 or a Pearl Harbor, okay? He doesn't have that. It, it, again, it, it compare it to Bush. If Bush just said, like, hey, let's go fuck Iraq, let's go fuck Iraq and uh, attack Saddam without a 9 11, I don't think he would have been reelected if he didn't have 9 11 and he just attacked well, and, Iraq. Right. And you, you are absolutely right. He does need something. OK, mm. but that doesn't mean that Trump doesn't want to go to war. That's all I'm saying. The man wants no. to go to war. It'd be great for him if he went to war. He would get reelected if he went to war. Mm. I say he does want to go to war. He was, now, he, I he also was, agree. With how you. do you know how you're uh, reading his mind? 
I just look at what he's saying. I'm not reading his mind. I'm also looking at exactly what he's saying. I mean, he, this says, is... he says his whole brand, his whole branding was bring the troops home. Another guard, this atheist, is saying, Armin, what about George Bush Senior? Well, he had Kuwait. He had hold like that. He was yeah. So again, um, and he also okay. George Bush Senior had Kuwait, and he also had the backing of the whole international community. The whole world, was, the whole civilized world, was on his side. Does Trump enjoy that today? He enjoy. He has the exact opposite. Uh, right, but if he gets his nine eleven, if he gets his yeah, whatever, he, that, he needs a nine eleven. He I will think, go to war. I, oh yeah, of course. If he gets his nine eleven, they're trying. That's why they're trying. That's why they're not going to war yet. They want. They're trying to put something for Iran to attack, because yes, I, I agree with you that uh, right. They but they want a better excuse. Right now, it doesn't look like they have an excuse. Right now, it looks like well, Iran was abiding by the deal. You pulled out of it. Now you're bullying them, and now you're trying to go to war with something that you pulled the deal, you know, with, with something that you didn't abide by. So this right now, it doesn't look good if they go to war. Okay, they need. For Iran to do something massive, right? So they they try, they're poking them and like, hey, do something, do something. So we yes. can't, uh, right? So yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, let me see. Chris is saying there were actually intelligence that suggested that FDR knew about Japan. I don't know, Chris. That I heard about that, but that sounds like a conspiracy theory to me. If that is true, I I want to see more evidence of that. Uh, the, he's saying, I heard about this conspiracy theory before. So Chris is saying that uh, there was intelligence that suggested that FDR knew about Japan's intent to attack Pearl Harbor. I don't know if that's true. If somebody f knows something about that, sounds pretty far-fetched to me. Uh, Mars is saying, if an in international... By the way, by proof, I mean not, not like somebody just heard something, okay? Like actual proof. Mars is saying, if, if an international event that gives the U.S. president some kind of righteous narrative behind the declaration of war, that, yeah, he he'll probably get reelected. Yes, I agree with Mars. You wouldn't get reelected if you don't have that righteous narrative. The other presidents that went to war and got reelected, they had a righteous narrative and excuse for war. Right. And uh, but what Trump the doesn't only have thing that, that right I now. wanted to say hmm. was that Trump wants that. Trump okay. wants it. But right now if he goes to war, I don't think he will get reelected. I think right now if he goes to war, he would lose. I, I might I might agree with that. Yeah, right. that's a maybe on me, but right. he wants he, I, I believe he wants it. Atheists are under attack in many places. If they were Christians, their voices would be heard. If they were Jews, their voices would be heard. If they were Muslims, their voices would be heard. But they are atheists, and not many seem to be listening. Let's make it difficult for them to ignore us. We have built a global community, and now we are tearing down geographic, cultural, and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we are doing the same in other languages. With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي بودكاست باللغة العربية. As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff, and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi, and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content, and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them, and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.